What we know is that there are patients who have a primary diagnosis of COPD, but also share features uh, uh, that an asthma patient might have. And likewise, asthma patients who may have had asthma for a long period of time start to develop symptoms that really mimic a long-term COPD patient. Um, asthma COPD overlap syndrome, it's not an entity unto itself. It's not a typical syndrome. In this case, we're talking about a disease state like COPD, where patients also have an overlap of symptoms with a separate disease state like asthma. And it makes a big difference when it comes to diagnosis and treatment, so that's why it's so important. I think through the COPD gene study and other research papers, especially the last couple of years, we feel that about 15% of patients with COPD have features that give them an asthma overlap that's significant enough to make a difference clinically. They may have a history of asthma, a diagnosis of asthma, maybe as a child, uh, maybe they have elevated blood or sputum eosinophils. Some of those traits that, that look more typically like an asthma patient, but they are clearly a COPD patient. So about 15%. Now how many patients with asthma also have features of COPD? I don't think we've nailed that number down quite as well yet, um, but we're looking at some, probably in the same range, 10 to 15% of those patients have COPD, especially patients with asthma who may have smoked for a long period of time. So they had asthma, maybe diagnosed as a child, maybe allergic asthma, but now over time they've smoked, so now they start to look more and more like a typical COPD patient. When I give my talks, I try to help people visualize, okay, so if they have a patient whose primary diagnosis is COPD, but they're also exhibiting some asthma-like symptoms, you're going to go ahead and treat that patient COPD like you would normally, using the gold guidelines or whatever you're comfortably doing, but then look at some of those asthma features and find out, well, maybe they have eosinophilic asthma or maybe they have allergies that would benefit from referral to an allergist and treatment. And likewise, if somebody has asthma, but they're starting to develop features that look more like COPD, does that patient still need and still respond to inhaled corticosteroid therapy? So there are questions you want to ask when you, especially been treating patients for a long period of time, think, okay, are they starting to change a little bit or have I overlooked some more typical asthma features even though I'm treating them for COPD? And don't ignore some of those clues that say, hey, wait, this patient may have some overlap with another disease state and treating that other disease state simultaneously can make a big difference.